My fiancé and I have been together for over two years. I don't have a big family, just my dad and my older sister. My dad has always been a single parent devoting his life for me and my sister and working over 14 jobs in the past six years to provide for us. I love my dad and we have the best relationship anyone could hope for. However, my fiancé does not get along with him. They have different opinions on so many things. For example, my fiancé one time suggested to my dad to sell the truck he has because it's been sitting there for years. My dad got offended because this is my grandfather's truck and he has no monarch to get it fixed. Another example, my fiancé got mad at my dad at a party for talking about his struggle after my mom's death and accused him of collecting Simapti points but dad said that he always talks about it casually, their recent disagreement was when my dad refused to give my fiancé money to contribute to the wedding. My fiancé complained but I said that my dad isn't obligated to pay for the wedding. Yesterday my fiancé told me to look for someone else to walk me down the aisle and asked why. He said that my dad refused to help with the wedding and he should be grateful he's still invited. I got upset and argued that for one, my dad refused to contribute because he has no money, he cannot offer to pay. And two, just like any bride I want my dad to walk me down the aisle on my wedding day. He threw a fit saying that I was trying to ruin his mood and get him upset on our wedding day but I called him selfish for wanting to take away the moment I always dreamed of, sounds cliche but I'm like that, over his disagreements with dad. It's not fair given that he and my dad are on great terms. He yelled at me for calling him selfish although it's our wedding not just mine and said that I clearly don't give a hoot if he's uncomfortable then walked out, he's fuming and is insisting I'm being inconsiderate and projecting on him when I called him selfish. My husband and I are first-time parents to an eight-month-old son, Jack. I've struggled since he was born. I had a difficult pregnancy. My son had colic, and my maternity leave was short. I was diagnosed with PPD and am getting treatment, my husband and I both have demanding jobs. I'd love to quit, but we can't afford it right now. I don't have many friends in the state where we live, and I'm lonely. My MIL is in poor health, and my husband is gone two per week helping her. I haven't had a day or evening off since Jack was born. Plus, our home was flooded by a broken pipe five months ago. Handling the cleanup has been a nightmare, my mom lives one hour away and has never once offered to help with anything. We've always had a pretty good relationship. She was a stay-at-home mom and was very loving and devoted to my brother, sister, and me. She's an empty nester and spends her days doing yoga and seeing friends, my mom won't see the baby if it's very low effort. I asked her a few times if she could babysit or run an errand. But she always says no. Once I called her at the height of my PPD sobbing, saying I was scared to be alone and could she come over. But she had brunch plans. I stopped asking for anything until today, my best friend of 25 plus years is getting married next weekend in State B, which is two hours away by plane. I'm the maid of honor and my husband is officiating. Children are not invited because the venue is unsafe. About seven months ago we started looking for someone to watch Jack. We called everyone we could think of. After a month of searching, we finally found a babysitter in State B through a friend of a friend. Well, the babysitter called on Friday and cancelled. I've spent the past three days calling childcare agencies with zero luck. I finally explained my desperation to my mom and asked if she could watch Jack for 24 hours. Or I offered to fly my mom to State B with us, get her a hotel room, and she'd then only need to watch him for 5 hours. I was in tears begging her, but my mom said no. She has a yoga class she doesn't want to cancel, it was the straw that broke the camel's back after months of no empathy as I flounder with PPD. I told my mom that since she is never willing to help ever, I will be cutting off all contact and she won't get to see her grandson. I know my mom is under no obligation to help us, but then she should not expect to see my son. Did I do it right for denying my mom a relationship with her grandson because she never offers to help? So my husband rented a beautiful hotel room for us on my birthday in a beach town. Said room was a large studio and had two TVs so it was obviously designed for guests to also have guests. Well at 9.30pm on a Sunday night three hotel staff, one not even in uniform, came knocking on our door saying that we need to keep it down because our neighbors filed a noise complaint. 
The hotel was pretty empty and they placed another family next to us which we though was weird but whatever however, we said okay and that our family was leaving. Then the employee proceeded to go on about how she will call the police. Again, our family was leaving. It became escalated when I asked why she was threatening police presence. I then stepped away from the door and allowed someone else to speak with her. But later, when I asked the manager if protocol was followed they said no and they don't need to. The reason I am upset is because we are people of color. So calling the police unnecessarily could have escalated the situation in a dangerous way. Today was our speaking to the GM of the hotel and I want to know if I may be taking this too far. To begin with I love my son with all my heart. But he blew up his marriage by cheating and has moved back home, I have three children. My oldest is my daughter 30, then my twins 25, my oldest just got married to a wonderful man. My younger daughter is going to grad school overseas and that leaves my son. Let's call him Carlos, he has always been a handful. He got married when he was 20. His ex-wife had a three-year-old daughter whom I love and no matter what I am her grandmother. They had a child together. My other grandchild. He is too, COVID caused a lot of stress in his life and he works in a fly-in fly-out camp job. He is gone for two weeks at a time. Then home for two weeks. He makes very good money and enjoys spending it. Maybe a little bit too much, Carlos cheated on his wife with a co-worker. I am not judging him. I am not perfect. But he chose to leave his wife and children and move back home. It doesn't really make sense for him to rent an apartment or something for the 12 days a month he is home. So I allowed it. But he decided to be an ass, in my opinion, and bring his dog with him, my grandbabies love this dog. But he is trying to punish his ex for telling him to leave, it is a beautiful border collie and it is the perfect dog for their home. Huge yard, lots of walking trails nearby, even an off-leash park only a 10 minute drive away. I live in an apartment downtown. I am allowed a dog but if I were to have one it would be something sedate and non-shedding like a Maltese, I swear I tried watching this dog. But my son is irresponsible. He doesn't walk him much. He doesn't brush the dog. He is just holding on to the dog to lever his way into his ex's life, the last straw was this last time off work. He was away for two weeks, and he then came home for one day before flying off to the United States for a vacation with his new girlfriend. So I called my daughter-in-law, checked that she wanted the pup back, she almost cried with joy, packed up everything that belonged to the dog and took him over there. My grandchildren were ecstatic, my son just came home for three days before he has to leave for work and asked where his dog is. I told him the truth, he is calling me an asshole for giving away his pet. Also because I said that if he tried to go get the dog and bring it back he was not welcome in my home. After my husband left for his brother's bachelor weekend trip our son, who is two, was very upset because he forgot to tell him that he loved him. I thought he would forget about it and I did try to distract him but he was crying for hours over it and was refusing to sleep so I facetimed my husband in the hopes it would calm him down. I was planning for the call to be a quick 5 minutes but they were talking for over an hour and I could tell that the others were getting impatient, my brother-in-law texted me later on and was upset with me because I had called my husband. He said he was just asking me to give him one weekend of my husband's time and if I needed help I should ask his parents or get a nanny. He thinks I used my son as an excuse to check in on my husband which annoyed me so we had an argument through texts because I told him I'd call my husband whenever I wanted to. I have two cats, they are incredibly affectionate tuxedo cats that are two years old. I have been dating my boyfriend, River, for a few months now. He knows that I have cats, we went to my house the other day, and my cat was meowing and purring by the bag of treats. I said something in a baby voice and called my cat Lovey, and then gave him treats. We went upstairs, and my boyfriend said that it was kind of creepy that I would call my cat Lovey and that it makes him uncomfortable. While we were eating, my other cat jumped up on the chair and started purring and rubbing against me, and I started petting her while still talking and eating. My boyfriend asked if I could cut it out, and I said that he was being ridiculous, I might have been a bit rude, but he says that I'm spending too much time with my cats and that most dogs are not as annoying as my cats. I felt a bit offended.
My parents divorced when I was eight, I stayed with my dad full time and went to visit my mom two weekends a month. My dad stayed single for all my childhood and adolescence. I met Josh 1.5 years ago, because he was my boss at the company, I started working half time while finishing college, same field, well Josh and I started getting along so well and hanging out, I even met his wife, Mary a couple of times. Well, for my 22nd birthday I decided to throw a party and invite Josh and Mary to come. My dad was there too of course and I introduced them to him, they shook hands, shared some info and that was it, that was their whole interaction during my birthday party, like two weeks later Josh came to me saying that my dad was amazing and a fun dude and then let me know that they, he and his wife, had some beers with him and from that point they became best friends. My dad would constantly go to their house on weekends to have some grill or whatever, they also invited me but I never went. Three months ago, Josh came to me to tell me that my dad was a bastard and a homewrecker who seduced his wife to cheat on him and got her pregnant, I called my dad to know what was going on and he told me that Mary left Josh to be with my dad because they had an affair and she was pregnant and also told me that they love each other, I found out that they've been having an affair for a year, almost immediately after they met for the first time. They plan to get married after the twin babies. Boy and girl, are born and Mary's divorce is finalized. Not gonna lie, I feel guilty because if I hadn't invited Mary and Josh, they had never met my dad and this wouldn't have happened, and I can't look at my dad the same way I did, he went after a married woman who has a 10 years old boy, I know he is a great dad to me, I love him very much and I know he will be a great stepdad and dad to this new children but I can't just look at him the same way I did. I still talk to him but try to keep my distance as much as I can, he invited me to their baby shower. But I said I couldn't go because I didn't feel comfortable he asked me why so I said, Dad, to be honest, I can't look at you the same way, you went after a married woman with a child, you got her pregnant and now wants to act like nothing has happened he told me this doesn't affect me any way and that his love life shouldn't be my problem but I had to quit the job since Josh became insufferable. My mom and friends say that I should support my dad because I don't know what Josh's and Mary's relationship was like which is true. I don't, but I can't help but feel guilty and sorry for Josh. My boyfriend and I have been living together for three years now, together for four, he, Sam, always have known that I dreamt of living in one of the southern cone countries and he knows that I would have moved if I hadn't met him, I picked up Spanish last year and somehow he completely ignored it until he heard me today on a video chat with my language partner. I think he realized how much progress I made and I wasn't just playing around, he doesn't want to move from the states and I accept that and I accepted that if I'm with him. We make those decisions together. However, I strongly believe that just because I don't have plans to do something now doesn't mean that it will never happen and who knows what may happen in the future and at least I will be prepared. No harm in learning, right, that's not how he saw it. He blew up at me, telling me that I should stop that we're never moving so what's the point of learning it. He said that he felt that I would leave and it makes him feel insecure and I should just drop it. I told him that no, it means nothing and I explained my reasoning and he accused me of planning to leave and not thinking we will always be together, he told his family about this and I've had phone calls all day telling me that I should respect his wishes, calling me an asshole and heartless bitch, I thought I did nothing wrong but I'm seriously questioning myself now. I want my fiancé to cut off his longtime female friend, my fiancé and I have been together almost 7 years, lived together for 6 years, engaged for 1 year, and have 3 kids together, my fiancé has had mostly the same main friend group since early high school. One of the friends in the group is the female in question. Most friends in this friend group have partners and children, this female friend does not. So, for the most part, she has ceased contact with most people in the friend group. Besides my fiancé and another male friend in the group, who is also engaged with kids. I don't know if it bothers his fiancé, dot, in the past, my fiancé's friendship with this woman has caused issues for us. Circa 2016 to 2017, they would hang out often alone, and that made me uncomfortable. I vocalized this, but he thought I was overreacting, and I told myself as much and tried to get over it. However, a pattern was forming where she would come over around 7 p.m., and leave by 9 p.m., right before I made it home from work. She was clearly avoiding me, and it made me suspicious. 
I tried to forge a relationship with her since we started dating in 2016, especially as this woman and I honestly had a lot of music plus interests and stuff in common. But she would usually leave me on read, and it was hard to form any kind of bond, we would hang out together sometimes, us three, and I always felt like the third wheel. The main things she seemed to want to discuss are memories they shared together of times before I came along. I got pregnant in early 2018, and we slowly stopped hanging out with with her, as we did most people, while we worked a lot in prep for baby. We would hang out together sometimes, us three, and I always felt like the third wheel. The main things she seemed to want to discuss are memories they shared together of times before I came along. I got pregnant in early 2018, and we slowly stopped hanging out with with her, as we did most people, while we worked a lot in prep for baby, since 2018, she texts my fiancé about every 10 days, if he doesn't initiate a conversation sooner, which he does sometimes. She has sent him things like memes about the known heartthrobs from Stranger Things, with the meme saying God gave me two holes for a reason. Went to a titty bar, she's straight, and sent him a picture of the dancers. Etc. There are other things too. But it's just weird vibes, in September 2021, also, I was heavily pregnant staying in a hotel with my best friend who was also heavily pregnant as a girl's getaway before my babies arrived, fiancé was home with our toddler. This friend of his texted him saying she wanted to come over. My so told her no, sorry, he was alone and I didn't want him to hang out with other women alone. Especially at 11 p.m. She replied saying oh, I guess thought I'd be the exception to that rule. But uh, okay. That's fine I guess lol. Her butthurtness set off huge red flags, especially because we hadn't hung out with her at all in any capacity for over a year at that point. Fast forward to now, things have finally kind of come to a head. She has been consistently texting him every week or so for months. I looked at my iMessage conversation with her, and realized that she has been ignoring my attempts to contact her, 8 in total, since May 2021, when she found out I was pregnant again. My last attempt was May 2022. In these attempts, I'm texting her to catch up, asking how she's been, etc. I have truly been trying to touch bases with her because I cared about her and part of me still hoped she wanted to be friends. And if she's going to keep going to my fiancé for friendship like this, I would like to be somewhat involved. But it's clear she does not want me to be. I figured she was just busy until we connected the dots and realized she has never left my fiancé on read once, these days, recently, she texts him saying she wants matching tattoos with him. She wanted them to get them together and at the same time, the tattoos being on their butts. Said a whole thing to him about I don't want the curse, of matching tats, to ruin our relationship though. Definitely made me super uncomfortable. She continues to text him around every 10 days, if not sooner, often just bringing up a random memory with him from years ago that he doesn't even remember sometimes. She just did last night, what do?